a little bit uh, to another step right now. We've been doing, we've been meeting here for several months and uh, bringing in entrepreneurs to show their service and uh, their products and their innovations. And now we're taking it to the next levels. We're taking the uh, basically the story to Facebook Live, to Twitter Live video. It's also on two radio stations. It's also streaming live on the TuneIn app. So uh, we're trying to get a little bit more interactive with folks in and around uh, Northwest Indiana. Most of the people that show up here and show us their wares, and there's actually a number of them in the audience right now, show us their wares, and they are private businesses, and they are uh, commercial businesses in the, in the marketplace. I'm not altogether sure, and I'm looking at Mont. I don't think we've had somebody that is in the not-for-profit not and in innovating in that world. There's a lot of people in here. I see a few faces that actually serve on boards and have served in executive positions in not-for-profits. So we are going to give a huge hand here now for Phil Zilke, who is in the not-for-profit world. Take it away, Phil. Thank you. So I guess since I'm the first not-for-profit presenting, this will be the very best not-for-profit speech you've ever heard in this room. <laughs> A few years ago, I heard words that I thought I would never, ever hear. I thought it was for people that were older than me. I thought it was for people that didn't take care of themselves as well as I did. But I heard doctors look at me and say, Phil, you have cancer. Those words completely devastated me. I didn't know what to do. I had a flurry of emotion that was going through my mind, and I had to deliver the news to my girlfriend on our two-year dating anniversary. After going through cancer treatments for six months of chemotherapy and finding myself on hospital bed, my new reality was completely different than before because I, all of a sudden I couldn't rely on myself to get through. I had to trust the doctors. I had to look to all the people that showed up and visited me, people that did random acts of kindness for me. And I had to get to the point in my own journey where I was completely broken to realize that it was okay to accept other people's help. Uh, to get through this journey. So after six months of chemo, the doctor said I was cancer free and I was thrilled. I started my first job that school year late in September as a fourth grade teacher. And so I was thrilled to share my experiences and how I got through that with these nine and 10 year olds. And they were just like little sponges soaking that all up. Well, I taught that year just for a few months. And then I started getting these pains in my hips again. And that's where the cancer was the first time where it was attached to my bones ran some tests and found out that the cancer came back. It was still stage 4B, most advanced stage of the disease. I was devastated. This time I didn't deliver that news to my girlfriend, Carrie. I delivered it to my fiance, Carrie, and let her know that we're going to have to postpone our wedding even though we're only three months away from it. So that next year, I found myself at the worst times in an isolation room, hooked up to tubes for feeding. Um, I was not able to have many visitors, and when I did, I was too sick to have noise most of the time. Well, during that time, I realized that there's a big need, that I wasn't the only one that is going through this. In fact, just by a show of hands who's in the audience today, how many of you know someone today that's going through cancer? Just about every hand went up. According to the American Cancer Society, 1.6 million Americans will hear that news for the very first time just this year in 2017. Same thing's gonna happen in 2018. And they say in our lifetime, one in two men and one in three women will be diagnosed with the disease. Today there's 15 million Americans that are living with cancer or cancer survivors just in this country. So if you don't know somebody today, chances are that you will. And I never thought it would be me, let alone two times. Oh, I'm thrilled to say up in front of you here today that I am cancer free and I have been for the last 10 years. And that girlfriend Carrie, who became my fiance, is now my wife and we have two wonderful boys at home as well. Uh, and for the last 10 years, uh, we've had a great life together. Well, during that time, I saw a big need. And so I'd set these little bite-sized goals. The first day, I just wanted to get out of bed. The next day, it might be to get out into the room or get out into that hallway, into that floor. And I'd have that IV pole behind me. And I'd set these little goals to go maybe to the first door the first day. So I'd take that IV pole and I'd walk forward. And I'd stop at each of those rooms. In each of the rooms that I stopped at, I saw other patients who were sitting there all alone. You see, people are traveling from all across the country just to go see certain doctors. Other people have these broken families, 
And so maybe it's a single mom that's taking care of their kids. And so they're out working. And so what I did was I would smile to those patients that I saw because I knew that's all I could do at that time. But what I did was I kept a journal over the course of that whole year of what people did for me. And a group of people put a care package together for me. They said they were thinking about me. They were praying for me. It meant the world to me. I had a couple individuals who sent me cards in the mail, and it came out every single week. And so when I was well enough, I'd suggle down those stairs, out to the front door, put my hand in the mailbox to see if someone remembered me. And every single week, there was a note inside of there of encouragement. And it always came exactly at the right time. Well, this organization is really about stories. And as you can see on the screen, uh, one of my very, very best friends who actually passed away about a year ago, her name was Carolyn. And so I founded an organization, Phil's Friends, about 10 years ago. We deliver care packages. They get out two ways. One way is we ship them to people's doorsteps across the United States. There's about $50 worth of items that go in there, from a blanket to a journal to a crossword puzzle, to let people know that they're not alone. And then these patients get cards in the mail. Well, Carolyn founded the Hope to Hospitals program with me, and she was going through leukemia, and she just wanted to visit patients at Northwestern. So through that, we started creating our Hope to Hospitals program, and now our targets over the next year is to connect with the top four of the 50 cancer centers in the United States, which are in Chicago. And then we're able to reach out through volunteers. So we have a Hope Center. These are kids that are serving there. We have one in Roselle, Illinois, and we just opened one in Crown Point, Indiana. And we'd love for you to be able to come in to serve. A group of 50 people can come in, and they can pack the care packages and make cards for patients. And this is an activity that you can get involved in. Well, this is my family today, and I'm thrilled to know that my story continues. But there's a lot of people that are sitting all alone in hospital rooms, and they need help. And people from the medical profession, they're overwhelmed attending to people's physical needs. And there's a time in every single cancer patient's life where you feel all alone. And so I'd encourage you to get involved through volunteering or donating. And so my question to you today is how will you help us bring hope to cancer patients? Thank you. For those of you guys listening on the radio, that's uh, Phil Zilke. Phil, thanks for uh, you know, sharing this story. Uh, it is a lot of emotional uh, stuff to this story. There's also a business side to what you're doing right now. And typically, we, I think we all have a path for you know, first stage, second stage funding and, and how you go about start. A, I think we just had a, a gal who basically self-funded her own in a transition. How do you start up an innovative not-for-profit in a business manner? Yeah, so I think the biggest thing is anything starts with a vision. And so we had a vision of where we want to go. We want to connect with the top 50 cancer centers across the United States. Uh, we also want to set up these hope centers where people can serve across the United States because the need is so big. And I think one thing that uh, is common, whether you're not-for-profit or a business, is passion. And people pick up on that. And I think the, ba the greatest things and the, the largest growing companies, if they run extremely efficiently, they're meeting a very large need. And there's many people that are going through cancer. And so basically I had a bunch of people who rallied around me and you went around and shared, shared the story. Uh, people picked up on that. They were able to see themselves in that story because they have a grandfather or they've personally you know, gone through that journey as well. And so for us, for funding, it's a big thing. We really want to reach sustainability. Uh, we set a very bold five-year plan uh, for us to continue to move forward, and it has a multi-pronged approach. Uh, the one thing is that um, we have these events, you know, fundraising events we're able to run. And then another thing is we need to be able to count on income each and every month and I think uh, there's ways where you can have major donors, but there's also a way to become sustainable by having these monthly gifts that continue to come through. So for as little as $50, people can join on and support a care package uh, each month to be able to go, go out to patients and their families. So you, you talked about the, pair, fair, uh, the care packages. Now, is there interaction with the patients also? I mean, how does that happen? Yeah, it's a great question. So is there interaction with the patients? Uh, yes. So we'll deliver 10,000 care packages this year. About 25% of those will be done in hospitals. And so we have um, volunteers that come in, and it's two people at a time that go into hospital rooms. And basically they get scrubbed in, they knock on the door, they go in and they get down on someone's bedside and say, hey, just want to let you know I'm thinking about you and praying for you. And then what that whole interaction becomes is that uh, sometimes those interactions will just be for a couple minutes at a time, depending if they're going through a stem cell transplant. 
Other times, these people are all alone, and they just want somebody to be able to talk to. Uh, many of the cancer patients that we visit, especially if you're a survivor when you're in there, uh, just by going and identifying and say, hey, my name is Phil, I'm a two-time cancer survivor, they're going to be asking you questions to glean information from your story about how they can get through that as well. Um, so it's a joy for us to be able to interact with patients one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Once again, uh, for you folks listening on the radio, I'm Jim Deedlow, host of The Morning Show here. Also, this is a Jed in the Money segment as uh, we have uh, folks come in and present their innovative ideas as part of One Million Cups and the Kauffman Foundation. This is Phil's Friends, and uh, we bring hope. And uh, you guys just heard the story of Phil Zilke. And, uh, Phil, the actual website again is? It's philsfriends.org, P-H-I-L-S-F-R-I-E-N-D-S dot O-R-G. And uh, anyone can visit that at any time. So at this point, we can uh, open it up for questions uh, from the floor here. And I would certainly encourage folks to come on up here and talk at the microphone. But if there's anybody driving around that's hearing this and you have any questions about this, we can also maybe take one phone call this time at 219-845-1100. Also in the Facebook Live uh, video of this, there's a comment section. If you have anything you want to hit us while Phil's here, you can hit it there also. All right, so I'm going to open it up to the uh, open it up to the floor. Just kind of walk on up here and uh, introduce yourself, and then uh, go ahead with your comment or question. Hi, I'm Debbie Wargo from WGOB. Pleasure um, to meet you. Amazing speech. Thank you. Uh, very heartwarming. Um, enjoyed it. Um, how can organizations? Um, I belong to a couple organizations, and if we want to come and volunteer at your Crown Point Center. Mm -hmm. First of all, how do we get involved doing that? And um, also, how do you determine where you're going to deliver the care packages? Great questions. Uh, first of all, getting involved. We want to be able to engage a number of people. So we have people come to our Hope Center and serve, whether they're corporations or businesses, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, uh, churches, community organizations. And so the way to do that is easily to go to our website, and you can sign up to volunteer. And uh, basically it takes one person to reach out and then they rally a group of people uh, to come and serve. So that's again at philsfriends.org. Also you can give us a call uh, on our uh, phone number which is 224-653-8671. And the way that this really works is that uh, the word travels just through word of mouth. Uh, everyone knows someone with cancer, someone who gets a care package. Um, the second question was how do, how do we know, how do we identify the people uh, that are going through cancer? Well there's two ways. Uh, our first way is through our Hope to Hospitals program. And so as we're connected with the Northwesterns and the Rush and University of Chicago's of the world, basically we get approved by that hospital. And we get our own badge and we go in and we have Masters of Nursing students that volunteer. DePaul University, we have over 20 students that engage with us for two years. Uh, and they go through and visit these patients. So they basically give us access to everybody that's in that hospital that's going through cancer. And the reason is uh, patient satisfaction scores are going up because we're there. Uh, patients are talking about it, and that's a big thing this day and age, uh, especially for hospitals, uh, that patient satisfaction continues to rise. And so that's one way we have an open door. The second way is people go to our website, philsfriends.org. So if you know someone who's in Florida or somewhere else in Indiana or, or Iowa, wherever it is, you can go online and uh, fill out our care package request form. And on that form, you basically put in your information as the requester and then your friend's information as the patient. And all it takes is name and address, and then basically out of our uh, main headquarters in Roselle, Illinois, we ship these care packages out three times a week. And so then these care packages will show up on people's doorsteps anonymously uh, from the organization, and then cards will start sh of encouragement will start coming as well. Uh, thanks for your presentation, Phil. My name is Dakota McCoy, here with Green Cow Coworking. Uh, this question comes from Brad Pitt. What's in the box? <laughs> That's a good question. Thanks, Brad. Um, so inside the box, there's a number of items. And so it's about $50 worth of items that go inside. Uh, there's different. Got a, got a microphone there, oh, so there we go. Okay. I appreciate that. Actually, makes it much easier for me, anyway. So inside, uh, there's a number of items. One is a blanket. You know, every time when someone's in a hospital or they're at home, it's, it's great to have the comfort of a blanket. Uh, and then also inside, there's a journal. I kept my um, thoughts down for a couple of years. It was a part of my healing process. And so we keep a journal in there. There's a lot of time that passes. Uh, so there's word search puzzles and Sudoku books uh, when you can't have visitors or don't want visitors. Uh, tooth toothpaste and toothbrush. Uh, there's a water bottle. It's good to be able to flush fluids uh, while you're going through it. Kleenex. 
Um, we also put a Bible inside of our care packages. We're a Christian organization. And so every care package that we get shipped out, I uh, have the opportunity to put, in, put that in there. And then in hospitals, uh, Bible is not included. And uh, there's socks and also hats uh, that are created. So, Thanks, Brad. Yeah, once again, we're talking to, uh, for those folks on the radio, it seems like if you're here low, if you're here in the audience, other than Jim Rags, I think some of you guys might have some questions about why I keep introducing it, because we are live on the radio, and we're talking to Phil Zilke. He has Phil's Friends. It's part of one of my Jed and the Money segments, and this one is One Million Cups with the Kauffman Foundation. You can watch it right live on Facebook, facebook.com slash WJOB.1230. Mont Hanley puts all this together, both One Million Cups and here at the Purdue Commercialization Center. Mont wants to say a couple words. Great presentation, Phil. Thank you. Um, for any other non-for-profits or for-profit businesses that would like to um, present at One Million Cups, you can go to our website. It's One Million Cups. It's the number one spelled out million cups backslash Hammond. And you can apply right there. Um, our committee that actually votes on everybody who is going to present uh, decided that we would actually look at one nonprofit a month. So if you're a nonprofit out there listening to this, I think it's an opportunity for you to get some great exposure, as it is for private businesses as well. So please apply. We're only doing two a month through September, but then we'll do uh, every Wednesday once once school starts again in September. So please apply. Um, I think I was put in touch with you through Susan Webb at Fair Oaks Farms. I think they recommended that you be a presenter, and I'm really glad that she recommended you. Uh, I also think working with Lauren and Judy has been phenomenal. They're awesome. Are they volunteers? Uh, no, they're employees. Okay, great. They hold me together. It All takes right. many to do that. Very good. So, yeah. um, so um, wow, I just lost my train of thought. Jim, it happens all the time. <laughs> Always. There you go. Hey, uh, what we're going to just one final question. Um, Phil, I know you've, you've, got, you've shown a little bit of your vision. Give us five years from now where Phil's Friends is. Sure. Five years from now, it's our goal that we're going to open 10 of these hope centers across the United States. And our targets are the top 50 cancer centers. And so within five years, we're, we're hoping to be connected with 25 of those cancer centers. All right, guys, let's hear it for Phil, all right? Thank you. All right, so uh, those of you that have been here for a while, we, we go, typically go a little bit longer, but since it is uh, kind of a show right now, we're going to uh, do a little bit shorter. And, Phil, I want, we want to thank you so much for sharing uh, openly your story, thank and you. I'm sure that it's a story that is repeated across America, and also for just seeing the need, and uh, very much thank you for that. And I want to thank everybody here for coming in. Uh, to, did someone else have a question? Oh, my, you wanted to finish up? I think he's on. All right, guys. So that is, uh, right now we're going to finish our Facebook Live. Thank you.